All right, guys, we're back. Uh, it is the final week of the Oregon archery elk season. Uh, I say Oregon because we do have some other, well, one more state in particular. Yeah, yeah so Oregon so. ends 25th. 24th, 25th? 25th. 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 And so Cody, he is headed out here tomorrow? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Two yeah. more days. He's going to head out to Idaho and go for a whole week in Idaho because their season goes for a little bit longer. But we are done after this next few days. Yep. Yeah, and it was, has been a hum, 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 dinga, dinga. It's yeah, crazy. it's been phenomenal. You no, know, I think like we were talking earlier, like the roller coaster of elk hunting, that right? Look at that. We've Freaking experienced rack. super high highs this year, incredible lows. It's been whether the fires, um, rut activity or lack thereof, to screaming bulls, to mm -hmm. close encounters, the weather, all of it. The weather, weather. yeah, Weather's yeah, it's been, been huge all too. over the map. And I think as much as it it's like that's what elk hunting is you just yeah. never know what to yep. expect we've uh we've kind of got to experience it all and um this week was no different we started off literally had high hopes were just like level 10 jacked we're doing this we drop in not an elk Crickets. not a track mm. not a bugle mm. uh covered a bunch of amazing ground and just couldn't turn up an elk and we just kind of like well what do we know we got to move and instead of just hunting the same stuff over and over and hoping that something moves in there it was like let's go explore and kind of that's how it led us into i would say thing. that being mobile has been one of our like keys to success yeah. absolutely Too, yeah, like the place that we moved from is somewhere that you know as a group you guys have harvested a pile of elk from but at this very moment in time it wasn't producing so like not getting caught up on that you know, this has worked in the past. We'll be in here at some point and just go, oh, let's go try somewhere new. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it worked out. Absolutely. Yeah. We kind of built everything that we've ever done off of that. Like, yeah. I, I would say, like, absolutely. Yeah. The I whole, think. with our first adventure, and this is just going to go way back to like headed out to Wyoming and trying to just, you know, kind of get away, <coughs> excuse me, get away from the Roosevelt game and try this Rocky thing. We had general season Wyoming tags and we went out there and we, it opened our eyes to a whole different kind of hunting. It opened yeah. our eyes to adventure, I would say. It opened our eyes to something different, and it was it was pretty awesome, and I think we've been kind of building on all those things since. Yeah, no, and I think, um, you know, a lot of people talk about, just touching on Roosevelt, it's like they don't bugle, can't call them in. Well, we found a bull that did the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I mean, it, you find the right bull in the right mood, yep. and it's like you can't do anything wrong at that point. And that's our hunting style, right? Yep. So we'll weed through those however Look, many. Looking for a biter. Yeah, yep. we'll weed through those however many that we don't know, you know, their temperament, or we don't even hear them. They're not even, you know, in our in our sphere of playing the game, and then we find one that does. And yep. it's like, oh my goodness, this is it. And then it's testing temperament and getting him to come in is what it is. And Man, this last week was was awesome. The the big takeaways, cannot wait to show all this footage from all these different rep reports that we put out. Um, but the biggest takeaway that I have personally as far as just things that we did this season is teamwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was um, some just regular hunting things that shots just don't sometimes go as planned. Uh, just the whole the whole matter of getting the team together, everybody on the same page, everybody going after the same same um, goal that we all have is finding this elk or getting a shot at this elk or whatever that may be, splitting up two shooters, trying to get the get ourselves in the best opportunity for success. And that was that's this whole season. Yeah, and I think the cool thing is like overall we've probably had less bulls bugle this year, but like the encounters to bow range has been extremely high. Let, let's talk about that because with regards to the, the rut report from New Mexico to all across Oregon, we're seeing a delayed rut. Absolutely. Yeah, plain, I would agree. Plain and simple. These bulls are still, except for Noah's bull, which I'm not going to spoil it, but he had a pile of cows. Um, Appreciate most, that. Of, most of them. Noah didn't kill a bull, but whatever. I mean, the the bull at Steve, <laughs> I don't know. Where the blood, yeah. Had had zero cows. Zero he cows. was a monster. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Zero cows. And we're late out September. The, the other thing that I noticed is leaves aren't changing yet. Usually by the end of, end of September, you got leaves changing. Tamaracks are 
yellow to almost orange. They were the, just in New Mexico. Ju- they were just starting to turn. The aspens just, were. Yeah, just barely yeah. starting to turn. To Which, yellow. like, think back to when we were in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The leaves were falling off. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yellow and orange and mm-hmm. falling off. Yeah. Um, so and we've talked about years, a bunch, but like that late spring, calves dropping late, everything's going on. I mean, it's yeah, just kind of just a later. Out. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely been a, a different year as far as that goes. But we kind of. We saw it early on. It's like, okay, the second half of the season is going to be where we're going to have to just buckle down and just hunt our tails off to try to find a bugler because, you know, normally the first part of the season we have opportunities and it was pretty minimal. So we all kind of just focused on that. Let's do it when they're bugling. So You said it perfectly on, on my tag. The rut's happening somewhere. It's somewhere. We just yeah. got to find it. Well, exactly. I, think that, I think that, yeah, I think that goes to that show. Mentality. Yeah, it goes to show our kind of hunting mentality, right? Yep. Like, looking for a biter, like Stranger says, like, it takes know, one wh- hot cow yeah, to one. turn a whole creek drainage into a totally different scenario from Correct. day to day. So. And we're going to cover ground to try to find that. Yep. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. No, I, I think it's. I think it just shows spades of what we do as far as there's a thousand different ways to hunt elk. There's 100%. a thousand. You can spot and stalk. You can do a bunch of different things. But the way that we love to kill elk is calling and getting in close and personal and but to do that like cody said you they've got to respond right i mean yeah. we're not just sneaking on elk in the flats of colorado in a boulder patch it's just we're not not what we're doing so, so it's kind of fun yesterday evening and i mean a little spoiler my pants are covered in blood and my hands are covered in blood we, we found some success here recently um whoa but that whoa, whoa. <laughs> that, that that bull calling cows beagle that was pretty unreal unreal pretty unreal he reacted i mean oh yeah yeah in it a big way yeah coming fast and it goes to show the calls like it goes to show kind of what we've built on the call side what? of things like yeah dude and steve, dude steve's steve's hunt in new mexico was not bugling it was cow calling it was right? cow calling the two-tone was unreal yeah i mean the bulls were eating that call up it just it goes to show like man with each one of these rut reports that we put out honestly you can see these smiles all the way down this yeah. line with these weird sunglasses on <laughs> but as far as just like the calls that we're building the calls that we're making in the people's call company are crushing it's been cool. crushing been a lot, been a lot and there's something too like and strands experienced this in the past with waterfowl and what else but being able to like go through an entire season with our calls and harvest a good amount of bulls on our calls and have a good amount of calling it's just it's cool it's a different feeling and it's a yeah. different pride i think that comes from it a little bit it's very rewarding yeah, yeah it's, it's awesome yeah. yeah it's awesome it's awesome man it's like uh, it's like building your own fly yeah. and catching a giant steelhead except you're killing 300 plus inch elk. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, think, I think the one thing that my takeaway at just talking about the rut report yeah. is like when a bull responds to a call, whether you bugle at it, whether you lift ball or it's a challenge bugle, or if you're Esther's sound bite, two tone, you've got a new call we're working on mm-hmm. that yep. the bull's really lit up on, like whatever it is, like go with what got you there. If he's yeah. cranking on it, stick to it. Yep. Don't all of a sudden be like, oh, I need to challenge bugle him now, even though he's screaming at the cow call. No. Well, and one thing you stick noticed early it. was locate with the bugle, and then they were lighting up on that cow call. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yep. It no, it's, it's been a good learning year, I will say. I mean, I've learned a ton mm-hmm. this year. Yep. Um, it's, and, yeah. It's been awesome, like, exciting, I would say, going into next year. Yeah. And yeah. like, okay, guys, this is what worked, but how can we tweak this to make it even better? Yep. yep. And we've Just, already got a ton of ideas going into next year that we're going to start developing stuff. and it's just going to grow from here so anyway and as you guys too like your guys's experience and stuff like that what do you need like what could be better what in the industry would you go oh man i could man i think this could be better i think i could we could improve something on this comment below and we man that's the whole thing it's like we want to build with you guys we want to learn with you guys and um and make this thing to where everybody is going out there and being successful so we got a couple days left. We're going to hit it hard. Yes, um, we are. And uh, just huge. If you guys, if this brings any value to you or if you're excited about elk hunting, share this video with a buddy.
tell your friends about Land of the Free. It's dropping Monday, November 7th, the first episode. Um, it's honestly, I feel like some of the best elk content we've ever filmed. Um, it's It's been Amazing. a truly humbling year in that sense of just like, man, it, we, we've landed on the X again, you know? So um, really excited about what we have in store for you coming up this winter. Get you guys through that off season and uh, yeah, we're stoked. And too, if you've killed a bull this season and you haven't shared with us, text it to us, email it to us, share it on social media, yeah. tag yeah. us in it. We want to share those photos um, and share your success with, with our following and and just and uh, promote you guys. So, so yeah, you can text. It's 877-256-2457. Send us those pictures. Move. That was a bull yeah. move. That's a bull move. <laughs> and uh, bull move. yeah, we would love to see them and we'll share them with uh, all you guys. Sure. Thank you guys so, Thank you. Much. so Thank much. Thank you guys so much. See you next Monday. No worries. Nickels and dimes Or a nine to five grind I gotta get loose sometimes In trouble